All right, today we're going to be solving systems using substitution today, which is my personal favorite method because it comes in handy so, so often. Um, so what we're going to look at is another set of equations where we have a system, two, more, two or more equations with the same variables. And I want you to think about, could you possibly solve for x and y without graphing this system? Okay, and I'm going to show you a method that I would use, and then we'll uh, take it through step by step. So try to do it on your own if you think you have any thoughts. Um, otherwise, you can kind of just watch what I do. So I know that x plus 2y equals 10, and I know that y equals negative 3x. So what I'm going to do, because I know that y equals negative 3x, is I'm going to substitute negative 3x in for y in the first equation, because y and negative 3x are just the exact same thing. So what I'm going to say is x plus 2 times negative 3x must equal 10. Okay, because negative 3x and y are the exact same thing. So then I'm going to go ahead and solve this problem. This looks like x plus negative 6x equals 10, which means negative 5x equals 10, and therefore I think that x equals negative 2. Now look, I'm not done with this equation yet because I only know what x is and I need to figure out what y is. So I'm going to use substitution again. This time I know what x is. x is negative 2. And I'm going to solve for y by plugging x in to this equation. So I think that y equals negative 3 times x, and x I've established is negative 2. So I think y equals negative 3 times negative 2, or y equals 6. So I believe x equals negative 2 and y equals 6. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check mine at the top. So I want to know if x plus 2y really equals 10. So negative 2 plus 2 times 6, does that equal 10? Negative 2 plus 12 does equal 10. And I've already actually checked that y equals negative 3 times negative 2 because that's how I solve for it. So it looks like x equals negative 2, y equals 6. We can have the order pair negative 2, 6, or just simply written out. That should be my solution. If you graphed it, hopefully you'll get the same thing. Okay, this method that I just used is called substitution. And here are the steps to substitution in case you're like a kind of rule-oriented person that wants to have them all written out. I'll go ahead and display all of them at once. Okay, so substitution. The first thing that you need to do is get one variable in either equation alone. So in my last example, the variable y was already alone in the second one, which made it easy. If it's not, you need to get one of them alone. Once you have that done, you can say, hey, I'm going to substitute the expression that I obtained for the variable. So whatever I get for the variable, I'm going to put it into the other equation and then solve for the variable. And then finally, I'm going to substitute the new value, like what I got for the last problem when I found out that x was negative 2. I substituted that into either of the original equations to solve for the other variable. Okay, and then finally, you should always go back and check your work and see if it really makes it true. So, <clears throat> let's look at this next one. This is probably the easiest type of problem right here. So, solve using substitution. So, I have y equals 2x plus 2, y equals negative 3x plus 4. And this is nice because y is alone in both equations. So, I'm just going to take this first value of y, 2, 2x plus 2, and substitute that in for y in the second equation. So I believe that 2x plus 2, which is another name for y, equals the same thing as negative 3x plus 4. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation. So just doing whatever you usually do, I'll add 3x to both sides. I'm also going to subtract 2 from both sides. Looks like 5x equals 2. So now I need to divide by 5. And I think x equals 0.4, okay, or 2 fifths. When I want to solve for y, I'm going to take this value that I got for x, 0.4, and plug it in. So y equals 2 times 0.4 plus 2. I'm going to plug it into the first one. So y equals 0 0.8 plus 2. So I think y equals 2.8. Okay, and then finally what I'm going to do is go ahead and check it. So I'm going to, since I just used the first equation to find out what y is, I'm going to use the second equation to check. So I want to know if y, which is 2.8, really equals negative 3 times x, which I think is 0.4, plus 4. So negative 3 times 0.4 is negative 1.2 plus 4. 
plus 4 equals 2.8. So that's a good sign because that's what I thought it should equal. So I've checked, so my solution in this case, x is 0.4, y equals 2.8. I could write the ordered pair 0 0.4, 2.8. I'm also perfectly acceptable with you leaving, or perfectly fine with you leaving your answer as x equals 0 0.4, y equals 2.8. Okay? All right, well, let's look at this next one. This is going to be a little bit trickier. All right, so negative 2y plus x equals negative 1. And 4y plus 2x equals 12. So what I want you to think about in this case is what variable is going to be the easiest to get alone since no variable is alone right now. Okay? So if you're like me and you want to be a smart, lazy mathematician, you're going to notice that in the first equation, x doesn't have an extra coefficient, so it's probably going to be the easiest thing to get by itself. So what I'm going to do if I have negative 2y plus x equals negative 1, I'm going to get x by itself by adding 2y to both sides. Okay, so I think that x equals 2y minus 1. Okay, that's good because now I have x alone and now in my next equation I can substitute x right here. I can put 2y minus 1 in for it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 4y plus 2 and instead of x I'm going to call it 2y minus 1 equals 12. And I hope you kind of see the point of doing this is so we're taking two equations in a variable or two variables in an equation, getting it down to one variable in an equation so we can solve it easily. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute here. So 4y plus, this looks like 4y again, minus 2 equals 12. Okay, so I'm going to add my like terms. 8y minus 2 equals 12. Add 2 to both sides. Get 8y equals 14. Divide both sides by 8, I get y equals 14 over 8, which I'm going to reduce that to 7 fourths, okay? Or 1.75, whatever you think is going to be easier to work with. Sometimes fractions will be way easier today, okay? So y equals 7 fourths. So now I need to figure out what x is. Since I have already solved for x alone right here, this is going to be the easiest place to figure out what x is. So x equals 2 times 7 fourths minus 1. So that means x equals 2 times 7 fourths would be 7 over 2 minus 1. 7 over 2 is just um, equal to 2.5 or 2.5. Oh, sorry, th I'm solving the whole thing out. 3.5 minus 1, then it would equal 2.5. So 2.5 so or 5 halves is what I think x equals. Okay, now I'm going to double check, and I'm, since I just kind of worked with that first equation, I'm going to double check in this equation. So I want to know if 4 times y, so 4 times 7 fourths, plus 2 times x, so 2 times 5 halves, I want to know if that really equals 12. So 4 times 7 fourths, that's just 7, 2 times 5 halves is just 5, that does equal 12, so I must have it right. So again, you can write your final solution as either just 5 halves, 7 fourths, or you could actually write that out. That out. x equals 5 halves or 2.5, y equals 7 fourths or 1.75. Okay. Alright, so hopefully you're getting kind of the hang of this. Okay, I think it's pretty important that you try one by yourself, so I want you to try this one on your own and then only come back to see if you've gotten the same thing I do. So 3x minus y equals 0, 4x plus 3y equals 26. All right, when I'm looking at a problem like this, I want to see what variable is the easiest to get alone. And I think to me, it looks like it's going to be pretty easy to add y both sides here and get y by itself. So 3x minus y equals 0, and I add y to both sides, then I get 3x equals y, which is nice because now y is alone, y equals 3x. And I can substitute that in for y here. So now I have 4x plus 3 times 3x, that should equal 26. So 4x plus 9x equals 26, and 4x plus 9x is 13x. So if 13x equals 26 and I divide by 13, I should get x equals 2, which is good. I mean, it's a nice pretty number, so that looks nice. Um, let's see if we're right. So I'm going to plug that into this equation. So I think 3 times x, which is 2, should equal y. So y, I think, will be 6. So I'm getting y equals 6. 
And then lastly, I'm going to go ahead and check it into my other equation to see what works. So I'll, I'll check in this one. So 4 times x, which is 2, plus 3 times y, which is 6. I want to know if that's really equal to 26. So 8 plus 18 is 26, which is what I wanted. That's good. And if I want to be on the safe side, it's always smart to check in both. So I'll try in the first one too. 3 times x, which is 3 times 2, minus y, which is 6. I want to know if that really equals 0. 6 minus 6 does equal 0. So I've checked both times and I'm right. And I've got my solution should be 2, 6. Or x equals 2, y equals 6. Okay, so hopefully you're kind of getting the hang of this substitution thing. You'll want to practice it a lot. We're going to do one word problem before I kind of send you off. So here's a word problem. A youth group with 26 members is going to the beach. There will also be five chaperones that will each drive a van or a car. Each van seats seven people, including the driver, and each car seats five people, including the driver. Write and solve a system equation to answer the following question. How many vans and cars will be needed? All right, when you're looking at a problem like this, you need to think what you care about. We care about how many things of transportation there will be because there are going to be five chaperones, so they're each going to drive. That means all together we can have five vehicles. I'm going to call V my number of vans that will be driving, and I'm going to call C my number of cars. So I know that all together my number of vans plus my number of cars has to equal five because there are five chaperones driving. Then I also care about the 26 people in the youth group. Um, or 26 people are going to the beach. Okay, so the next thing I care about is people that are going. So if I'm checking out people, it has 26 members in the youth group and also five chaperones, so there's 31 total people. And it looks like every time I take a van, I can have seven people. So in the vans, I should have seven times the number of vans. And in every car, I have five people, so I should be able to take five times the number of cars. So I know that I need 7 times the vans plus 5 times the cars. That should equal 31. Okay, And then I'm going to go ahead and solve this by using substitution. So let me get rid of this 31 for a second. And we're going to go ahead and work this out. So the first thing I want to do is get one variable alone. I don't really care what it is. V and C both look easy here. So I'll just um, subtract C from both sides and get that V equals 5 minus C. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute 5 minus c in for v in here. Okay, so I have 7 times the quantity 5 minus c plus 5c equals 31. All right, and then I'm going to use the distributive property and try to get this simplified. So I have 35 minus 7c plus 5c equals 31. I'm going to add my like terms. So I've got 35 plus negative 2c equals 31. And then I will subtract 35 from both sides and get negative 2c equals negative 4, which means c has to equal 2. That means I should have two cars that are coming. And so my vans should be 5 minus 2, so my vans should equal 3. And then I'm just going to double check. 7 times my 3 people, or 3 vans, plus 5 times my 2 cars, that's 21 plus 10, that will seat 31 people. So since this is a word problem, I of course should answer my problem in words. So I think you'll need three vans and two cars in order to get everyone in there. Okay. So closure. I want you to think about why it's sometimes easier to solve equations using substitution rather than graphing. Why might that come in handy sometimes? Um, and then just be prepared to do a lot of problems with this method in the next few days.